good morning uh, in the last class we had seen this that uh, we had derived the thrust equation and we had also derived equations for mass flow rate uh, the a e by a t uh, relationship in terms of p e by p c and we had derived the expression for uh, the exit velocity u e. Now if you look at the thrust equation we had derived expressions for m dot u e a e by a t and in terms of p e by p c right. We can now go ahead and define a uh, parameter that is of prime importance in rocket propulsion that is the specific impulse. Specific impulse as the name itself suggests is nothing but uh, uh, impulse per uh, unit mass okay. If you look at the expression for impulse, impulse is nothing but integral of f d t per unit mass of the propellant this is known as specific impulse or it is denoted by I s p okay. And, uh, when you work this out, uh, you can get this expression for ISP as thrust per unit mass flow rate, okay. M dot is this, so you get an expression as thrust per unit mass flow rate. Now we also know that uh, if you take the M dot here, you will get ISP is equal to UE plus A e by m dot ok. Now let us look at how to proceed on this further and get an expression for ISP in terms of uh, uh, we if you look at this equation we know the uh, expression for u e we know m e m dot and we know a p e by uh, p c in terms of a e by a t we will use that to get an expression for i s p now m dot i we had got this in the last class that is m dot is equal to p c a t by c star ok. So, I will use that and I will get Now u e we also had derived an expression for in the last class that is u e the exit velocity And we had also derived an expression for A e by A t in terms of P e by P c.
okay. Now if we substitute back all these terms we will get an expression for ISP. If you notice in this equation uh, ISP uh, the unit of this is meters per second and uh, if you look at all the other terms here PA by PC, PE by PC and AE by AT are non dimensional and you have C star which is again meters per second. But if you look at this definition you get uh, thrust per unit mass flow rate which means that this is Newton right or in other words Newton second per kg right. If you do expand Newton then you will get uh, Newton is nothing but uh, kg meter per second square. So what do you get? So you end up getting meter per second okay and also if you look at uh, most of the literature in rocket uh, or, uh, technology most of the books will give you a unit for uh, ISP in terms of seconds. Now uh, if you divide this by the acceleration due to gravity right uh, that the units of that is uh, meter per second square then you will get the unit that usually uh, rocket technology books will give you that is in terms of seconds. So both of these are used Newton second per kg and seconds are the units that are commonly used. If they are using an SI system they will use this otherwise they are going to use seconds okay. So now we have derived this expression let us substitute back I am not going to use this primarily because if we remember the discussions last time we would be knowing the geometric parameters that is AE by AT right and we would want to know what is the variation of PE by PC. From this expression it is very difficult to extract out this. So therefore what we said in the last class is we either use graphs or tables to get this value. So I will not use this here but without this I can write Okay. This is the expression that we get. So I have to have this brackets here. Now if you look at this looks like ISP is the function of two terms one is C star and there is another term in the brackets. This entire term we will denote it as CF okay, which is known as the thrust coefficient why it is called as a thrust coefficient I will be able to show it to you in a minute. So <coughs> ISP we can now write it as a function of okay. now C star this depends on only the energy content and 
and CF if you notice here it depends on uh, the nozzle characteristic which is given by PE by PC okay, uh, and the nozzle geometry AE by AT. So, if we know the nozzle geometry and if we know the ambient pressure and the chamber pressure we can calculate the rest of the parameters. So, it is only a function of nozzle characteristics ok. So, uh, the reason for dividing this into these two components will be obvious in a short while from now. Now C star if you remember is given as 1 by gamma of gamma into under root right. So C star depends on T c and the molecular weight T c is nothing but the adiabatic flame temperature ok. So, this is determined by what is the energy content in the propellant ok and m is the molecular weight of the gases. So, if we divide it like this we will be able to differentiate uh, for a given nozzle which of the propellants gives us the best performance ok. We will come to that in a little later we will now derive what are known as rocket equations based on all these things. We now know that F is equal to m dot u e plus a e and we also know f is equal to m dot into i s p from the definition of specific impulse and uh, if I use this i s p is nothing but C star into C f and m dot we know is nothing but P C A T by C star. So, if we plug these two into that equation we will get f is equal to I had called this as uh, the thrust coefficient. Now, if you look at this equation, it is obvious why it is called the thrust coefficient because these two terms gets multiplied by a coefficient uh, CF to give us the thrust, which is why the name thrust coefficient. Okay. So these are known as rocket equations and we will be using them pretty frequently in this course.
as I had said if you look at ISP we have defined it as C star into C f now C star I said depends only on the energy content of the propellant now if we are to determine which of the propellants is better which of the propellant combinations is better then we can do the following exercise we can make it independent of C f that is if we fix certain nozzle parameters if we fix the chamber pressure at a particular value the area ratios at a particular value and then the ambient pressure as one atmosphere then we will be able to make the ISP independent of nozzle parameters right so uh, that is independent of CF that is what is done and uh, typically So we need to fix the value of CF and uh, okay. to do this we keep the chamber pressure that is PC at 70 atmospheres then the ambient pressure is the mean sea level pressure that is 1 atmosphere and we ensure that uh, the nozzle is such that it expands in a way where P e equal to P a which is also known as the case where the flow is optimally expanded. and we choose an area ratio such that it gives this that is a e by a t is chosen such that okay now having done this we will get a value of c f for this to be around 1.6 for gamma equal to 1.2 okay so having fixed this cf we can now evaluate various propellants and see how good each one of them is okay and if we do that We will now try and see various combinations of uh, propellants and what is the uh, TC molecular weight and C star that we get if we do this okay. There are two kinds of solid propellants one is double base
then there is storable liquid okay and uh, lastly locks LH2 that is a cryogenic system. Now if you look at uh, TC for this these are the values uh, that you will get. If you notice in this there are several interesting things the C star value for LOX LH2 system is the highest okay uh, and therefore the ISP for this system will also be highest and that will be around uh, 400 uh, plus seconds okay. If we need to understand why this is happening we also need to look at this and this. If you look at these two the temperatures are similar in fact in this it is a little higher right but yet the C star values of this is higher than this. The answer to this lies in the fact that C star is not only a function of chamber temperature but also molecular weight. If the molecular weight is lower and the chamber temperature is high enough then you will get a very good C star and that is what is done in this uh, LH2 uh, LOX cryogenic system okay. You not only get a lower molecular weight but you also get a reasonably high temperature and therefore you will find that the ISP for this is the highest. Okay. It is also true that uh, any kind of propellant that we try to make we always try to make it fuel rich. Okay. Uh, the reason being if you look at uh, the molecular weights of fuel the typical fuel uh, elements are carbon and hydrogen right. Carbon and hydrogen have molecular weights of 12 and 15. sorry H is 2 right. So, carbon has uh, molecular weight of 12 and uh, hydrogen 2. Now, if you combine this with oxygen if it completely burns 
this will give to CO2 and this will give rise to H2O. Okay. If it completely burns in a liquid engine, uh, LOX LH2 engine, the reaction would be H2 plus half O2 to give rise to H2O. If you look at the molecular weight of H2O, H2O molecular weight will be 18. Right, but what we have got here is lower than that, that is around 12 to 15. The reason being we want to make it fuel rich while not severely decreasing this component, that is the chamber temperature. Okay. Then we will be able to get a higher C star. Okay. So, in a sense, all propellants we would want to make them fuel rich so that the C star values that we get are higher. Okay. The other important thing that is present here is if you look at uh, solid propellants to liquid propellants, in a sense you will find that liquid propellants have a slightly better performance even in the case of storable liquid compared to solid propellants. The reason is like this, if you look at solid propellants, solid propellants both the fuel and the oxidizer need to be present together and in the same chamber. right? So, that imposes a restriction on what kind of fuel and oxidizer that you can choose. They need to be compatible and they need to not start reacting as soon as they are mixed together. right? So, that places a severe restriction on the choice of fuel and oxidizer, but in a liquid propellant there is no such restriction because they are stored separately. Okay, they are stored in different chambers and they are only made to come in contact with each other in the combustion chamber. So, therefore, you can choose better liquids in this case whereas, the choice is more restricted in the case of solid propellants and therefore, you will find specific impulse of liquids will be superior to those of solid propellants. We all know this that uh, rockets also perform uh, outside the sensible atmosphere. Uh, the kind of things that we discussed here that is PC uh, A by A T such that it is optimally expanded, the flow is optimally expanded to a ambient pressure of 1 atmosphere. Uh, all these things are useful for assessing engines operating inside the atmosphere. That is the lower stages of launch vehicles okay. and also uh, certain tactical missiles. Now, what do we do when we are to look at things operating beyond the sensible atmosphere? Now, what happens to the thrust equation that we have derived? In this equation, if we are operating beyond the sensible atmosphere, P A goes to 0 and therefore, we will be left with an expression
P A is approximately equal to 0 and therefore, we will get F is equal to Notice that in the equation here, the term P A is with a negative sign. So, therefore, if you remove that component, your thrust will increase. So, therefore, you will find that the uh, thrust that is delivered by a rocket motor at uh, vacuum conditions is higher and correspondingly the specific impulse which is known as vacuum specific impulse will be higher than the specific impulse that you will obtain when operating within the sensible atmosphere. Typically, Typically, vacuum specific impulse will be 10 to 15 percent higher than the uh, specific impulse obtained within the sensible atmosphere or the sea level ISP. So, we have now learnt what is vacuum specific impulse and specific impulse. There is also another parameter called as density impulse. <coughs> density impulse is nothing but uh, the specific impulse multiplied by the density of the propellants that is product of that is ISP into rho p ISP we know is F by M dot that is F by M dot I can write it in terms of mass flow into mass into volume flow rate right M into m is equal to rho v if I use that then I can write m dot as rho p into v dot. So, using this
that is thrust per volume flow rate please remember the rho p that we are using there is not the density of the product gases but it is the density of the propellants okay so where do you think this would be useful huh? solids. solids this will be higher yes if you look at uh, uh, systems that operate within the sensible atmosphere you would want them to be as compact as possible primarily because then you will be able to reduce the drag or your net thrust will increase because net thrust is nothing but thrust of the system minus the drag. So therefore if you want to have the net thrust to be higher you need to also have drag lower. So if you have a system that is operating within the sensible atmosphere that is very bulky or a large volume then that will not produce the lowest drag. So therefore you need to have this uh, optimized for systems that operate within the sensible atmosphere that is for small boosters and tactical The reason for this is if you look at the LOX LH2 system, what is the density of uh, liquid oxygen? Any idea? Around uh, 1100, right? And if you look at uh, liquid hydrogen, the density of liquid hydrogen is around 70 kg per meter cube, okay? It is a very low density liquid. If you look at the space shuttle, right, the large tank that is on the back side of the orbiter, most of it is the liquid hydrogen tank because it is very low density fuel. Okay. If you have such a system for a tactical system, then the volume will be very large. Although the ISP is better, the volume is very large and therefore the drag will also be very large. So in such cases it is better to go in for a solid system wherein the density will be higher if you compare the density of this to density of solids, solids will be of the, the density will be of the order of 1600 to 1800 kg per meter cube which is very large so the systems will be much more compact. So for tactical systems and for small boosters it is better to go in for solid and for large uh, rocket motors that operate beyond the sensible atmosphere, it is better to go for uh, storable liquid or uh, cryogenic engines because then your ISP will be higher. Okay. Yes. Uh, what should be the density that we should be taking? Uh, is it the density of oxygen or is it the density of hydrogen? Uh, it it would be a combination of these two. So you will have to. Huh? Typically as I said uh, earlier, we do not use the stoichiometric ratios, we use it fuel rich that is typically oxygen will be of the order of 5 to 5.5 the oxidizer to fuel ratio. So you need to take that and then calculate the density. Okay. So. We have now learnt uh, what is it that we need to use if we are looking for a large system that is we need to use a storable liquid or a cryogenic system right we, when the operation is beyond the sensible atmosphere but when we are looking for tactical systems that operate within the sensible atmosphere and for small boosters it is better to go for solids. 
Now there is also if you look at the thrust equation the there are two things that are varying the C f will vary with respect to the area ratio right that we choose. So, if you look at this graph here right on the y axis you have C f variation and on the x axis you have P c by P e variation and uh, the graph also shows for different area ratios of the nozzle and for different values of gamma fine. Notice that uh, for a low P c by P e right and for a low area ratio things do not change too much all the uh, values different values of gamma give rise to uh, almost a single value of cf around 1.2 okay as we go to a higher and higher pc by pe the value of cf changes with values of gamma right and for large area ratios you see here that cf will change with the value of gamma and that change is not very small if you notice somewhere around 1000 uh, it varies between 1.7 to 2 okay. So, that variation is not small because C f and C star is what gives us ISP. So, the ISP could severely change depending on the value of gamma. So, also we need to keep in mind that the value of gamma that we have made use of in our all our calculations is like this that we have taken gamma to be constant and not varying beyond the uh, nozzle entry point okay. But as I said earlier also the value of gamma will change because these are reacting compounds and temperature and pressure are changing and therefore, you will find that gamma will change during the expansion process okay. And uh, it is important to note that during the expansion process if the gamma changes then the there could be a significant change in C f depending on the change of gamma. We will look at all these things uh, little later in the course. Now, we know that uh, the thrust varies if we have a rocket system that is operating through the atmosphere at sea level there is a ambient pressure and the ambient pressure keeps on falling as you go higher in altitude. So, if you go with altitude P a will decrease. So, therefore, if you look at the thrust, thrust is nothing but m dot u e into a p e minus p. Let us say we have a fixed area ratio nozzle okay, which is typically the case, then the p e is also fixed right. Only the P a keeps on decreasing as you go higher in altitude and therefore, you will see with altitude the thrust increases. because of this increase in thrust right P 
people have been looking at uh, what is known as adaptive nozzles which we will discuss in the next class. Thank you.